Dalad base. Dalad base. If the para aduma was burned outside of the pyre or in two pyres, or if he burned two cows in one pyre, it's invalid. If he if he sprinkled and did not direct it toward the entrance, it's invalid. If he sprinkled toward the sixth, seventh, and, and repeated the sprinkled the seventh, it's disqualified. From the seventh, the eighth, and he repeated the sprinkled the eighth, it is valid. If he burned it without wood, or with, if he burned it without wood or with any wood, even with straw or stubble, it's valid. If he skinned and dismembered it, it's valid. If he slaughtered it with intent to eat from its meat or to drink from its blood, it's valid. Rabbi Yella says intent does not invalidate the red cow. How can he have how can he have Kavana to drink from the blood? This, well, that's what we said. It's it's not it's not that it's mutter to do that, but if this guy got this weird thought in his head that you know I feel like drinking some blood, but let's say it was that Stuki. Right. Right. Who, who got up and said that he was gonna do this. Yeah. Right, just to mess things up. All those involved in the power of Duma service from beginning to end contaminate their clothing and lay validate the power of Duma by performing another task. It's in 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 an invalid in if an invalidating circumstance befell the power of Duma during its slaughtering, it does not contaminate its clothing. If the invalidation occurred during its sprinkling, um, whoever it participated in the service before its invalidation, it contaminates his clothing. And whoever participated after its invalidation, it does not contaminate its clothing. It thus emerges that its trinity is its religiency. It is always subject to me'ila until it becomes ash. And one may add wood to it, and its procedures are performed by day and by Kohen, and another task invalidates it until, until, until it is made into ash. And performing another task disqualifies the water until the ashes are placed into it. Okay. All right. Perikei. Hamevi ki cheres lechatas. Okay, so um, here, here is somebody who uh, who wants to get a a kli in order to gather to gather mayim chaim into it in order to um, put into water. Now he has to he has got all these all these stringencies that whatever was considered we we have we we have these principles that we we learned elsewhere uh, and we're going to see later in the masechta that when when one goes to mikveh. Um, a stam intention for mikveh is just to uh, is just to be tahor to be able to eat um, and for kohen mm -hmm. to just to be able to eat truma. That's a stam intention. Okay. Now, if somebody wants to eat kodshim, they have to have that in mind for kodshim, and then that covers them for anything that's a lesser lesser kedusha. And if somebody wants to uh, wants to toil for mechatas, then uh, then they ha then they have to have the intention that 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 is a higher intention than than stam kodshim. Okay, so you've got to have you've got to have that kavana when you're going to the mikvah that this is for mechatas. Okay, so so the guy who and anyone who who has not specifically been to mikvah with the intention of being tahor for the mechatas is considered tame regarding that person. So he's specifically got to go to the mikveh and have intention to uh, to be taho for mechatas. So he goes to so he goes to mikveh. He, he wants to bring the the kli cheres. The lan al kivshan. And he and his it says the tanakama. You've got to you if it's coming out the if it's coming out the kiln the the potter has just fired the kiln and you want to take be the first one to touch on any one of these kalim because because a kli cheres as soon as it becomes tame, um, is uh, you, there's no tahara for it. You can't put a, a kli cheres in the mikveh, okay? Which means that if you want to use a kli cheres for your mayim chayim, you have to be the first person ever to use it, to touch it, because right. anyone else who touches it, or well, okay, if they touch right. it from the outside, it's okay because kli cheres can't become tame from the outside. But if they stick their fingers on the inside, boom. Even if they're actually tahor. Because a re because regular tahara is considered tumma by the mechatas. Okay, so so says the Tanakama, the guy who is tahor for the mechatas has to sleep outside the kiln to make sure nobody else gets in there first, and then he, then when they open up the kiln in the morning after everything is cooled down, he goes in first and takes out uh, and takes out the kli he wants. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Afni min habayisu mevi v'kasher. He says, even if he goes to the potter's home, we, we, because even in Amah Aretz, we don't trust as, as regards to Truma, we don't with, with, with general Tuma and Tara, but, when, but 
for the regular Amha'aretz, if you ask him, is this Tahor for Kodshim? The Amha'aretz is very, very careful about a Tuma and Tara by Kodshim. And, ka, and for sure, for Mechatas, he says, yeah, yeah, for, for Mechatas, absolutely. He, you, you trust him because it's like asking an Amha'aretz, like, do you eat Chazer? <laughs> what, don't be ridiculous. I don't eat Chazer. Uh, it's like okay, so he's also he's also trusted as far as as far as Chat is concerned, and the halacha follows Rabbi Yehuda here. Um, over Truma. Now, what happens if it's a, if it's a kohen who wants to get a um a kli that's going to be used for Truma? For Seach is a kivshan v'notel because here the Amaret is not is not believed. He should be the one who opens the oven and he can take something he, he can take something out. Okay, because we don't we don't suspect. He doesn't have to sleep over outside the oven. It's as long as he's the first guy to, uh, as long as he's the guy to come in a, and see the oven being opened. Uh, Rabbi Shimon Omer, I don't trust him so much. Mina said Rasheni, rather wait until, uh, rather not not wait, but uh, r- rather take from the second row because maybe the the potter himself opened the oven before, uh, just to inspect his wares and he touched things on the outside row. And Rabbi Yossi is even more mad. He says, "Mina seder shlishi," because maybe the potter who was inspecting the things in the first row put his hand around behind it and touched with the back of his hand the the second row. So take from the third row. Um, and halacha follows the Tanakhama here, not Rabbi Shimon or Rabbi Yossi. Okay, Mishnah base. Hamat bil kli lechatas. So, so he has somebody who wants to use a regular kli, not not a kli, not not a kli cheres. He wants to use a nice metal bowl or something else that can that can just go to mikveh. Okay, so now if he takes it into into a mikveh, literally a mikveh, a, a bore which is not which is not um, fit for mechatas, it's not mayim chayim, it's a mikveh. Okay, so if he toibles it in water that is not that is not suitable for for, for, um, for mechatas, tarech lenagev, right? He has to he has to dry it off because any drops of water that are left behind. Will mix with the mechatas and um, and they don't and they spoil the the mechatas. We don't and there's no uh, there's no betel over here. We don't we don't rely on betel. It's got to be completely dry and all the water, not even a drop, is allowed to be from any other source. But my shame reoyim lekadesh. Now, however, if he tovels in a river, if, if it's a if, a, if it's a kli that was that was tame, and he and he wants to tovel it for mechatas. Um, in the river itself, where he's going to take the water out of, so let him just dip it in, and then straight away it's tahor, and he can pick it up, and whatever water is inside, there's no need to dry it because all the water that was inside there is uh, is tahor. Im lehosif mukudashin. However, if he want, if what he wants to do. Is it because he's already got because somebody else is already holding a key of Mayim Chaim and he wants to split it in between into different uh, into different containers. Ben kach or ben kach because if his intention when when he toveled it was not to pick up Mayim Chaim but just to tovel it and he picked it up and now it's not so he, so then his because it's uh, whatever drops of Mayim Chaim are left in between there you can't you can't pour from from another key into there because that. Because those drops that are left behind were not were not done with the intention of, of taking from Mayim Chaim. They lose the Kedusha, and now they're going to dilute the, the Mayim Chaim. So that that he would have to dry that. Okay. Now, here's an interesting one over here. It's a carrier, it's a, like a pumpkin skin or some sort of good, um, which is, uh, which the the thing is that it's, it's a dried skin, but it's nonetheless somewhat absorbent. Okay. Okay, so he dipped them into a mikveh. Okay, and now you can uh, So of course you have to dry it, but there's but there might be a chashash over here that it's got it's got some of the water absorbed in the walls, and that water might seep out into the mayim chayim. Okay, so says the Tanakama, it's fine. You can use it as long as it's not tame. Right, if it's if it's uh, if it's a, if it's a, a tower kli and uh, and and it's dry, we're not we're not koshesh for the water that seeps out into the uh, into the nitma. However, if it was if it was tame, um, uh, if it if it was it was actually literally tame before, um, and he dipped it into the mikveh to um, to uh, to, to uh, 
and he dipped it into the mikvah to uh, to to to, to be matir it. Ein mekatshin ba. You may not use this for at all for uh, uh, for kiddush, even even though uh, you dried it off and whatever. Now the difference being that that he, so the tanakama is more machmir on tumah than he is on on just stam water. Okay. okay. Rabbi Yeshua looks at this and says this is completely illogical. Im mekadesh hu ba if you're okay with uh, with being mekadesh with this when it's uh, when it's just dry and, and not when it's tame, then then why do you care? Because either either it's, either you're choshesh for things that, that that seep out the walls, or you're not choshesh for things that seep out the walls. Because either way, it's going to be it's going to mess up your water. Because if it's because water, whether it's water that's tame or water that's that's uh, that that was gathered not for the sake of mayim chayim, it's going to dilute it. Okay. Like this is what you're saying is completely illogical. Ben kach or ben kach says rather says Rabbi Yeshua. The uh, the explanation is lo yosif la socha my mikudashin. This is uh, he should not uh, he he should not lo le esof. It is actually uh, there's a preferred uh, girsa of this that is lo le esof. You should not add into this my mikudashim. Um, you you can't you just don't use this clear at all. It's not. Uh, it's it, if it had to go to mikvah and it's been and, and it's possibly got stuff absorbed in the walls. I don't allow it. Now, what's the difference? So let's explain what. Why did the Tanakhama say it was okay? What's his What's his reasoning? Because Rabbi Yeshua makes a uh, makes a very good point over here. Um, so I looked at the article yesterday actually, um, and it and it explained that that the Tanakhama's position is that um, is that the uh, the the nullification of uh, that 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 non non uh, maim chayim is nullified min torah whereas tumah is not. Mm. Okay, mm. so so it's a different so it's a different degree, and so he says we're not choshesh that much for the for the non maim chayim as uh, but but we are choshesh for the tumah. Whereas Rabbi Yeshua says ben kach ben kach, it's uh, he, he holds that that both of them are. Um, are, are are rabbinic in, in in any case, and if you're going to be choshesh for one, then be choshesh for both. It's probably, it seems like it's probably better not to even use a goy. Yeah, a yeah. I, think, many, I, I, think I think I think I would I would I would be inclined to to rule like Rabbi Yeshua. There are there are much better kalim to use. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Aleph Aleph. Um, Aleph. Aleph. Rabbi Eliezer says the term Egla means within her first year and term power means within her second year. But the comments say the term Egla means in her second year, while power means in her third or fourth year. Rabbi Meir says even her fifth year, the elderly cow is acceptable, but we did not wait for her unless she turned black in order that it may not become disqualified. Rabbi Yehuda says, I do not, he I do not hear any term other than Shalashis. And they said to him, what is this word Shalashis? Shalashis? He said to them, this is what I've heard without explanation. Then Ben Azra says, I'll explain. If you make Shalashis, this means you would expect to others in account. But if you say Shalashis, that's wrong, Shalashis, this means three-year-old. Similarly, they said a revive vineyard. They said to him, what is this wording revive? He said to them, that is what I heard without explanation. But as I said, I'll explain to you, say, if you say revive, this means with reference to others in a list. But when you say revive, it means four years old. Similarly, they said if someone eats a uh, Tzahara's affected house, in a uh, Tzahara's house, half a loaf of three kav, they said to him, say, of 18 to a saw. He said to them, so I receive without explanation. But as I says, I shall explain. If you say of three per kav, there is no kala. But if you say of 18 per kav, it's kala proportion. Then Yosef ben Gili says, param are within their second year, as it is stated, a second bowl shall you take for a kata's offering. But the comments say, even within the third year. Remeya says, even within the fourth and even within the fifth year, they are permitted. Except that I do not bring older animals because of considerations of dignity. Lambs are within their first year, and rams are within the second year. And with all of them, the year is reckoned from birthday to birthday. A sheep in its 13 month is acceptable neither as a ram nor as a lamb. Reb Tarfin calls it piglas. Reb Azza says it is no kid. Reb Yishmael calls it a, a parkadima. If he offers it, he brings it with libations of a ram, but it does not count toward his obligation offering. If it is 13 months in a day, it's a ram. Okay. And like I am. And Dalad Zion. 
Abahara is both living skin and expansion if subsequently the living uh, I'm sorry. Abahara is both living skin and an expansion. If subsequently the living skin disappeared, the negar is still tummy because of expansion. If the expansion disappeared, the negar is still tummy because of living skin. The same rule applies to white hair and to expansion. If the negar went away and it returned at the end of the week, it is treated as if it remained unchanged. If the negar went away and returned after it was declared tahar, it is examined anew. If the negu was bright and became dull, or it was dull and became bright, it is treated as if it remains unchanged, as long as it does not become less bright than the four shades. If the negu contracted and then expanded, or it expanded and then contracted, Rabbi Kiva rendered the tummy and a common rendered tahu. A baharis the size of a gris expanded by half a gris, but half a gris of the original baharis disappeared. Rabbi Kiva says it must be examined anew and a common rendered tahu. A baharis the size of a gris expanded more than a half a gris, but half a grist of an original Baharis disappeared. Rabbi Kiva renders a tummy, the cages, the sages render a taho. A Baharis the size of a grid expanded by more than a grist, but the original Baharis disappeared. Rabbi Kiva renders a tummy, and the comments say it must be examined anew. Kalim. And Kalim. Okay. Uh, Chess Gimel. I've been a chest in a closet that I've had one of their legs broken off, even though they can still contain, contain a taho. If they cannot contain in the usual manner, Rabbi Yossi moves the tummy. The poles of the bed, its platform, and its covering are tahor, but only tummy parts of the bed are the bed itself, and the malbim. But the malbims of the Levites are tahor. Regarding any malbim that was placed upon tongues, Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda rule them tummy. That Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon rule them tahor, and Rabbi Yossi says, why is this different than the malbim of the Levites? They should be tahor, for the malbims of the Levites are tahor. Regarding a bed, Regarding a bed that was tummy midras, if a short board is removed along with two legs, it's tummy. If a long board is removed uh, along with two legs, it is tahor. When the chametz moves it tummy, if one broke, uh, if one broke off, uh, broke off diagonally positioned tongues, or he broke off two diagonally positioned legs, if breaking it off a handbreadth from one and handbreadth from the other, or he lowered their bed to a height of less than a handbreadth, the bed is tahor. Okay. And then zavacham. Hey, bait. The bulls that are burned and the eagles that are burned have their slaughter in the north and the reception of their blood in the sacred vessel in the north, and their blood requires sprinkling toward the curtain and on the golden altar. The omission of even one of these applications prevents atonement. The remainder of the blood he would pour on the western base of the outer order, but if he did not apply it, it does not present atonement. If these and those are burned in the place of the ashes. The communal and personal katos offerings, these are communal katos offerings, and the hegos of Rosh Kodesh and the festivals, they have their slaughter in the north, their reception of their blood in the north, and their blood requires four applications on the four horns of the altar. How so? He ascended the ramp, turned to the surrounding edge, arrived at the southeast corner, then the northeast corner, then went northwest corner, and the southwest corner. The remainder of the blood he would pour upon the southern base, and they are eaten within the courtyard's curtains. Curtains by Melko, Hanan prayed in any manner for a day and a night until midnight. The Ola offering is the most holy offerings. Its slaughter is in the north and its reception of its blood in the north. Its blood requires two applications that are the equivalent of four, and it requires skinning, dismemberment, and a design in its entirety to the fires. Okay. And we are on to the two boats. And these are divorced without a ketubah. One who drank against the laws of Moshe or, or Jewish practice. Now what is the law of Moshe? If she feeds him food that is not tithe, has relations with him when she is a menstruate, does not separate collar or vows that do not keep her vows. Now what is a Jewish practice? If she goes outside with her hair uncovered or if she spins in the street or if she talks with every man, Abishol says also if she curses his parents in his presence. Reb Tarfin says also if she is loudmouthed woman. Now what is a loudmouthed woman? One who speaks in her house and her neighbors hear her voice. If one betrothes a woman on the condition that if she is not under any vows and it is found that she is under vows, she is not betrothed. If she if he married her without making any stipulations and it is found that she is under vows, she may be divorced without a ketubah. If he betrothed her on the condition that she has no bodily defects and such defects were found upon her, she is not betrothed. If he's married with married her without making any stipulations, and bodily defects were found upon her, she may be divorced with Agatuba, and all bodily defects that disqualify Gohanim also disqualify women. If bodily defects were found upon her, and while she was still in her father's house, her father must bring proof that these effects came about after she was betrothed and that his misfortune had caused it. If she entered the husband's authority, the husband must bring proof that she had these effects before she was betrothed and that his acquisition was made in error. These are the words of her mayor. The comment, however, say, what does when does this apply in the case of hidden defects? 
But in the case of exposed effects, it cannot make a claim. But if there is a bathhouse in the city, even in the case of hidden effects, he cannot make a claim because he examines her through his female relatives. As for a man yes. upon whom Bob is not Yeah, Eliezer, we've done three. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. And, okay. And Shuma. Okay. Um, for, uh, hey. If Fennec be fell into a wine by the true Master Shani. Hold on, hold on. I think we're in Chis, no? What? We're in Sukkot. Oh, we're in Sukkot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Wait a second. In the wrong place. Okay, I'm sorry. If one pilled an unclean fish with clean fish, if an, un if an earthen vessel holding two sods with unclean fish weighs 10 zoos in Judean measure, which is five cellars in Galean measure, its brine is forbidden. The Behuda says a quarter and two sods, but Yobiosi says one sixteenth of it. Uh, if unclean locusts were pickled with clean locusts, their brine is not rendered unclean. The Rebzotic testified that the brine of unclean locusts is clean. Uh, all that are pickled together are permitted except with leeks. Leeks of cooling with leeks of truma, vegetables of cooling with leeks of truma are forbidden. But leeks of cooling with vegetables of truma are permitted. Okay. okay. And that's it. Good. Okay. Have a great day. Enjoy yeah. it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.